Traffic will be heavy today. Traffic drones report heavy congestion leading into I 94's on ramp into West Edsel Freeway. Eight stacks high traffic sandwich. Air traffic control has instructed commuters to avoid this highly congested area. Go public transport, people. The hyperloop's working again. Thank goodness for Chinese ingenuity. It's up again. So avoid clogging up what's already clogged. Sylvia, it's messed up again. I'm going to be late again. It's a wonder anything gets done here. American know-how. My foot! Could you drop me off at Dearborn Hyper Station like five minutes ago? Sylvia Chang Brown is a woman of many talents, but patience has its limits, especially this morning. She doesn't need this, not now. She grimaces as Leonard Brown continues his monologue. Doesn't he stop? She thinks to herself, forgetting of course that she is logged on to Popo Brown, the name she gives the home jarring AI net. Sylvia, a soft motherly voice whispers in her ear, your heartbeat and pulse are above normal. I sense anger. Huh? I'm okay, Popo. A lot of things on my mind at the moment. Yes, Leonard, I'll drop you off as soon as Justin's done. Leonard sighs and crumples dejectedly into the couch. Justin, food's ready. Come down and eat. We have to hurry. Dad needs a lift. Justin Chang Brown, eight-year-old child of the Browns, rushes down to the kitchen and into his breakfast. Justin, 48 juice before you swallow, please. Yes, Popo, I will. Unlike his dad, Justin, with the insistence of his mom, keeps his family name. I need him associated with China. Don't we all? Sarcasm was never Lennon's forte. That usually starts a firestorm of arguments from Sylvia. Justin, like many others of his IS or intelligence spectrum, are in the midst of ability match period. Justin has been identified as having some autistic ability. In 22nd century Earth, Autism is generally regarded as humans with special abilities that can and should be nurtured to reach full potential. Today is a special day for Justin, as somehow he knows the outcome. It's all good, Popo. Mom, drone pickups here. Better tell them that's coming along. The Browns rushed out of their home to the waiting transport drone, which was on its scheduled charter. The cab was designed for two passengers as the booking or charter specified two persons for transport to the East Lansing Education Hub. The cab itself was designed to alter its configuration as it sees fit. Another innovation from the wonders of integrated AI into public transportation. However, due to the unplanned inclusion of Mr. Brown, the cab was unable to alter its configuration in time to accommodate the additional passenger. Dad, you're squeezing me. Leonard, could you move over and give us a bit of space, thank you? Leonard sighs and moves as much as he could to allow the other members of his family in. Please buckle up, we are in ascent. We should be airborne shortly. The transport drone takes the passengers above the gridlock airspace as the occupants are barely able to comfortably adjust their seats. We will be stopping at your station momentarily, Mr. Brown. Safety first, Dad. The drone descends into a spiral fashion and in no time latches on to an available landing slot. Thank you for your company, Mr. Brown. We hope to see you again. The cab effortlessly rises and continues its journey to East Lansing. Before long, the gleaming silver dome-like structures of the Education Hub comes into view. Overhead, the view is breathtaking as the sprawling hub looks like multiple large mushroom-shaped domes connected to each other and continues into the horizon. The cab makes its landing approach autonomously as it descends into the many student draw-off pads. Good morning, Justin. Mrs. Brown, I hope the trip was pleasant for you. I heard traffic gridlock was horrendous this morning. We were concerned that it would affect your arrival time. Thankfully, you're here and with ample time to spare. Nervous energy would best describe Fatima Sutira, the assigned learning observer mentor from UNESCO. This is one of her very first assignments. After the year-long aptitude character apprenticeship, the education guild favours only the best. There are no exceptions as far as education learning is concerned. More so today, perfection from its best will ensure that the multiple sites and other education hubs globally will be coordinated to ensure that practice assessments will be undertaken smoothly.
Sylvia has been preparing Justin for the practice session since he was a toddler. Focus, aptitude, and character strengthening were always incorporated into Justin's daily routine. As an analyst herself, Sylvia understands the need for these continual assessments. She knows that to do the assessments well will ensure that Justin's future and growth path will be well planned. I know he'll be alright. It's just this character and logical mapping spikes I've been detecting. I hope they'll be able to help. The three of them continue their walk down the long corridor with a hollow ceiling that amplifies the outside and creates natural lighting within the corridors. The steel-like wall seems to breathe as organomembranes that coat the walls are meant to ensure breathable indoor environment made the walk pleasant. Before long, they arrived at the opening of one of the many domes that are linked by these corridors and are the focal point of most of the activities within the hub. As they stepped into the dome, the entire ceiling just exploded and disappeared. They were outdoors, but indoors. The entire space was awash with soft natural lighting. Justin, Sylvia, and Fatima felt breathless as the grandeur of the dome affected their senses. I cannot get enough of this feeling, gushed Fatima. Wonderful and alive. Sylvia and Justin nodded and smiled in agreement. I think we have been assigned to field D, level 8. And I think this elevator will take us up. The ride up was smooth, and the elevator made note of its occupants to ensure that the correct speed and environmental sensory will be created on the way back after the short stay. I hope the ride was pleasant for you. Have a good day, Justin. Justin giggled as he tugged his mother's sleeves. They continued a short walk into an enclosure that looked like an open field with bright natural lighting. A smooth breeze welcomed them. It was literally an open field with the sights and smells thrown in. In the distance, a lone figure can be seen sitting in a plush and comfortable looking chair. He gets up and waves to the three of them to make their way to him. He gesticulates to show where they should settle when they reach him. Curious enough, it was a blanket laid on the field that looked like those centuries-old practice of eating out in a picnic. The three of them made their way to the blanket and made themselves comfortable. I am sir, but you can call me Bob. He paused, reached for his command pad, and continued. Shall we begin? Please make yourselves comfortable. This won't take long. Help yourselves to the food and refreshments. Now then, Sylvia. We have your output processed. Are you ready for your evaluation? The senior evaluator Bob Sear was always known to be pleasant. He was one of the better evaluators that used his friendly demeanor to probe his evaluees without much discomfort. Sylvia, surprised that she was the focus of attention instead of Justin, took a while to compose herself. Evaluation? I thought this session was for Justin. Bob Shear drew a long, slow breath. He was reminded by his professors to contain his personal emotional response in the presence of his evaluees. Unfortunately for Bob Shear, today has been a long day due in part to the numerous occasions where he had to respond to similar questions. Today was five. He smiles and in a reassuring voice, using carefully chosen words designed to allay evaluee's anxiety, in this case Sylvia's. Of course it is. The session is meant for just, but to fully optimize the analysis, all environmental input must be reviewed. In this instance, that would be you. Your well-being is fundamentally a prerequisite to a balanced outcome for Justin. Hence, my question. He slowly begins to smile. He has used this approach before. The third today. Yes, it's not about you, but it is. Bob shares the perfect evaluator. Never a step out of place. Anticipates the outcome, even before the answers are given. 
Unfortunately for Mr. Xie, today will not be what he anticipates. Sir, it's not about me. It's Mama, isn't it? I heard your soft voice, sir. Bob's heart skipped a beat. He turned to face Justin, who was busy munching away at his food from the picnic basket. Why do you lie, sir? He continued. Shush, Justin. Let Mr. Shear continue. Bob Shear is dumbfounded. Soft voice? He hears me. So, the detection is correct. Bob tunes into his focus mental state, which is a defensive discipline to defray queries into the subconscious. In his protective bubble, Bob is able to express his surprise at the raw ability which Justin has in abundance. He can be drained. Sylvia, on the other hand, the momentary lapse of communication from Bob the evaluator was only a millisecond, but internally, within his bubble, time was sufficient for him to arrive at a decision point on how the session should continue. Very good, Justin. You caught me using a ruse. He is anticipating and progressing well. I take it you provided him with ample opportunities to extend himself. His attention was once again focused on Sylvia. Extend? I suppose so. I do apologize for his outburst. He has this tendency to blurt at the most inappropriate time. I have told him about it many times, but as you can see, it isn't easy. He has these peaks which occur sporadically. I am unable to accommodate. Sylvia is disconsolate. There is that sense of defeat from her. Bob Shear has seen this before, but not from someone as young as Justin. Before he could offer his response, It's raining, Mama. Justin was delirious. He had not seen nor felt rain before. Sylvia looks up and her eyes begin to roll up and into her head. And only the whites of her eyes can be seen. Her body loses her top posture and she immediately crumples on the picnic mat like a lifeless sack, unconscious. Mama! Mama! Vital signs stable. Elevated BP and pupils are dilated. She is in shock. Good loop. Get the tray in. Everybody clear. Stop. Everybody stop. Thank you, doctor. We'll take over now. You and your trauma team can leave. Excellent work, I might add. What? She's going into cardiac arrest. We need to... Yes, yes, you do. She is in excellent hands, doctor. Don't worry. The chatter between the well-dressed gentleman and the trauma specialist is replaced with silent awe as another team who are far from medical personnel carrying monitor equipment and a multitude of scanners begin the job of resuscitating Sylvia. Mr. Pang, Sir, we are ready for hookup. The lab-coated personnel ushers in more team members obviously primed to provide the necessary assistance. Excellent. Please proceed, Doctor. Algorithm startup sequence initiated. Sylvia is online. Justin, it's okay. Your mummy's alright. She's just tired and the change in the weather affected her. I want to see her, please, Justin pleaded. Fatima kicks in her training and attempts to pacify the nervous child. Additional reinforcement on his mother's condition and open communications are tools that normally works in this instance. Unfortunately, this is Justin, the one that caught the highly respected Bob Shear in shock. She needs a rest, Justin. We go in after we've had some food. After much cajoling and assurances, Justin finally gives in and the both of them disappear into the food and beverage dome. Streaming, Doctor. We should reach 65% transfer shortly. Excellent. Rodriguez will be happy. Please continue the transfer and advice when you're ready for initialization. Yes, Mr. Pang. The smartly dressed gentleman leaves the treatment room and heads for the surveillance center. Inform Mr. Shear that I would like him to join me in 10 minutes. The surveillance room is unlike other similar types where banks of screens 
displaying the monitor and manned by many human operators watching, reporting and assigning tasks to unseen accomplices. This surveillance centre, however, is bereft of all that. It is bright with clean walls and curtains of sunlight cascading down from the transparent rooftops designed to provide a 360-degree view of the entire facility. In the centre, a sofa and a single leather-covered plush single-seater, the kind you find in the 20th century therapist establishment. This chair, however, is not meant for that. It is a designed item placed to elicit certain responses from subjects that are called in who are monitored in this facility and elsewhere. Bob Shear enters and is ushered to the sofa next to the single seater where Mr. Bang patiently waits for him to be comfortable. He places his empty glass of single malt whiskey from the glens of the British Isles. Mr. Pang looks at Bob with a scowl, reminiscent of a school teacher that catches his best pupil cheating. Tell me, soft yet firm, a voice technique meant to disarm and solicit information without additional embellishment. Bob Jia debriefs the gentleman on his evaluation session and is promptly interrupted. Enough! Has Justin awakened? Too early to determine, sir. I think more environmental catalysts are required at this juncture. Unfortunately, most of the other evaluators also agree with my preliminary assessment. Bob Jack composes himself as he stiffens for the onslaught that is due to come from Mr. Pang. The very composed Kenneth Pang has always been the standard which drives many would-be evaluators to achieve their maximum best. So, you are certain of this? You, not your colleagues? Bob is confused. The main mantra of the evaluators had always been predicated upon collective analysis and ability to agree to a consensus before any findings are released. Unfortunately, Mr. Pang is not any usual evaluator superior. He was always the one to seek and identify gifted individuals before the guild's identification methods even begin to collate information. Yes, are you hard of hearing, sir? I said you. There is no day, just you. The emphasis on the word you has a subconscious method to eke actual raw information from the intended target. Nuances in tonal speech patterns, environmental catalysts, all contribute to achieving the best possible outcome during evaluation reviews. Sir, I believe Justin had been awakened quite a while back. I would say about six months ago. Based on data from Sylvia, there wasn't any apparent catalyst employed. However, the data from Sylvia was not conclusive. That was the reason why we brought them in today. Excellent, Chair. That was what I wanted to hear. Data can only infer. Instincts are one of the most overlooked human traits that science has forgotten about. The need to decide on the fight or flee instinct is embedded deep at our genome level. It is natural to us. What we at the Guild tend to overlook is to employ our tools to secure data from external influences rather than capture them at the natural level of our subjects. Users have that ability, just as I do. However, you still have much to learn. Come, let's review Sylvia. 